hormone replacement therapy is so confusing, right? So many of you have questions about it. You're not sure what the right form is. There's a new study every single day. It's enough to make your head spin and I get it, but I want to help you for just a few minutes, understand a little bit about the world of hormone replacement therapy, understand conventional therapy versus bioidentical, what the differences are, and then even all the different ways you can take them. So let's talk about it first. So hormone replacement therapy is usually traditionally referred to as giving you extra estrogen, extra progesterone, sometimes testosterone, thyroid, any of these hormones to bring your own levels of hormones back into balance. Maybe you're trying to conceive or you're in perimenopause or menopause and your hormone depleted, but either way, sometimes the body needs some support. I know this personally at 28 or so when I was diagnosed with PCOS and I was in a major depletion state, I actually needed some progesterone. It was just a very small amount, but I used it topically as a cream and needed it for three or four years while my gut healed, my nutrition got back on track, but eventually stayed off of it through the remainder of my 30s and 40s. And now as I'm hitting 51, I am needing a little bit of progesterone and estrogen for the first time. So let's break it down. Conventional therapy, when it comes to hormone replacement, usually is using estradiol, which is the most active form of estrogen, and progestin, which is a very strong progesterone. Those are in the conventional patches, like a Vivelle or Climera patch that you might get a prescription for, or a progesterone pill that you might get from the pharmacy. Typically, those pills are dosed around 100 to 200 milligrams, depending on you and your provider and what you guys uh, decide at the time. Sometimes oral estrogen is also prescribed. Not a fan of that, and we'll talk about why. Or vaginal estrogen, known as estrace, is prescribed as well to plump up, especially in women going through perimenopause and menopause to kind of plump up the vaginal lining because they're getting a lot of vaginal dryness and that's impacting their desire to have intercourse and so much more. So all of these that I've just sort of mentioned are in the traditional pharmaceutical sort of litany. They are used by the majority of practitioners and providers and they're the options that you're typically presented with when you're asking for or feeling like you need hormone replacement therapy. Now, here's the issue with some of that. The doses I mentioned are standardized. The forms I mentioned are standardized, meaning if you're someone super sensitive like me, then you're not going to necessarily tolerate a really strong dose of estrogen or progestin. You may have side effects like breast tenderness, weight gain, mood issues, joint pain, so much more. And I've seen this over and over again in practice at Center Spring MD. So if conventional is not the right option for you, or you're somebody who you know you already have detox issues, or you have hormone metabolic issues, or in general, you don't tolerate things very well, and you just want baby doses of things, the conventional world does not really give us the answers to that. So I am a big fan of bioidentical hormone therapy. However, I know bioidentical hormone therapy undergoes a lot of debate and a lot of back and forth. And here's the reason why. Some bioidentical pharmacies don't submit themselves for regulation. So there's confusion about that. There is also this debate about what's FDA approved or what's not. Here's the deal. If you go with a reputable pharmacy that is certified and has done their due diligence, I actually prefer bioidentical hormones for most patients compared to our traditional hormones. Why? Because I can manipulate the dosing and I can also manipulate the way those hormones are given. Let me show you, for example, with a bioidentical hormone, whether it's estrogen, progesterone, or testosterone, I can put it in a device like this, concentrate it, and then tell you how many clicks to take. So we have this device, this one, and even this one, all of which are using topical creams to dispense hormones. The advantage of that is that we can play with it a little bit. I can concentrate this cream and tell you just to take one click, but maybe you're not getting results. So we might then increase it to two. Same ways, this is an injector applicator of hormones. Same thing, you can manipulate the number of clicks, which allows us to customize the dosing of hormone for you. The other advantage of bioidentical hormones is that it's not all straight estradiol and it's not progestin. It's bioidentical progesterone that looks and feels like the very same estrogen and progesterone that we make. 
what we are doing often is combining the highly active circulating estrogen, estradiol, with a softer, more protective estrogen called estriol. And when we do that, we're able to alleviate a lot of the hormone symptoms, like the hot flashes, night sweats, and those type of things, without like sledgehammer approach, giving like a massive dose of hormones that then your body may or may not be able to detox appropriately. So that's why I like these, because I can play with the dosing. I can use the clickers for the creams. We can use the injectors or the pens as well for creams. We can use suppositories. So injecting vaginally is a great way to ensure absorption of your hormone. We can, and this is another suppository form, by the way. And we can even do trochies, which are dissolvables, and they're dispensed in a case like this typically, and they're dissolving under the tongue. Notice none of what I talked about was oral, where you're swallowing it and it has to go to the liver. And because it has to go through the liver, you need bigger and bigger doses. These are all forms that very gently absorb into the system, work with the system, so that we can get away with lower doses of hormones. The only other form is an injectable. So a lot of testosterone shots, for example, and even some of our peptides getting into that world are actually injected. So this is drawn up and you give yourself a shot, typically an IM or a sub-Q shot. So the theory of hormone balancing when it comes to East-West medicine, when it comes to a more holistic approach, is that the smaller doses are better as long as they're giving symptom relief and they're getting our blood levels to where they need to go. Mega doses are out. They're hard on the liver, they're hard on the gut, they're hard on you. That's why I don't like pellets. You don't see a pellet here because I'm not a proponent of pellets. It drives those hormone levels up really far, brings them down, and we can't manipulate it. They're off running the races in your bloodstream and there's no way to pull back and change course. So if you're thinking about hormone replacement therapy, I would kind of divide your brain up into a couple of different scenarios. Do you wanna try bioidentical or conventional? Conventional, if you're worried about cost, because sometimes the bioidenticals are more expensive. However, if you're very sensitive, have a history of detox issues or cancer or inflammation, the expense is worth it when it comes to bioidentical hormones. Next, you want to ask yourself, what are you going to stick to? Is a cream going to work? Or is it going to be a suppository? Or is it going to be a trochee, something that dissolves under the tongue? And pick one. And work with your provider to formulate the dose so that you're able to effectively manipulate the dose that we can find for you. The World Health Initiative study that came out years ago was so flawed and scared everybody when it came to hormone replacement therapy, but was done on postmenopausal women using Premarin, horse urine as the source of estrogen, and then saying it caused cancer and had all these other effects to it. That is not the answer for women today. We need bioidentical hormones that work with our bodies in gentle doses with monitoring to make sure our bodies are able to tolerate it well and keep us vital, healthy, and active for years to come. All right, hopefully this helps clear up. I'm sure you're going to have a ton of questions, but hopefully this clears up some of the conversation around hormone therapy, where I stand, what really is holistic and natural versus what is more of the very aggressive overly ambitious, I would almost call it, approach to hormone therapy. All right, I talk about this and a lot more hormone stuff in my latest book, The Hormone Shift. Don't forget to click the link to get your copy now. And don't forget, post new videos every week. Hit like and subscribe.